We are live. We are live. We are live. Welcome. Welcome. Wherever you at, you are at the right place at the right time. You could be anywhere in the world, but you're here with me. And I honor that and I appreciate it. You are rocking with the best. This is the number one home for personal development. This is Coin Gang Ministries. This is Ministry for the Abstract Mind. And I just want to let you know that this is a safe space for everybody out there with an out-the-box philosophy. This is neutral ground, right? So I don't care who you're dating. I don't care about your hair. I don't care about your car. I don't care about your politics. When you come over to the number one place for personal development, this place right here, it's about knowledge. It's about you walking away better than you came. Shout out to y'all on this Good Friday. Hopefully all is well. Hopefully you're being appreciated and never tolerated. If you have babies, if you got babies, please, y'all, do me that favor. Do me that favor and keep your babies close to you. And if you got somebody in your life that's loving on you, man, let them. Because this love thing, you know, it doesn't have a manual to it. So be patient with them, right? But I did mention love, though. <laughs> and we're definitely going to talk about that tonight because, hmm. I have somebody interest, very, very unique and very interesting. What I have in my hand, y'all, mm, is a is a weapon. This is a sword. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is product, though, right? First and foremost, that's what I respect about this, because it's a lot of content creators just, but not many. Can take their ideals right and put it in a bag and sell it this takes guts this takes nerve this takes audacity i have a guest with me right and before i bring them on i just want to acknowledge the product though right how many people have product right everybody's firing up streams not many people have a call to action though so if nothing else, whether you agree or disagree with my guest today, you got to respect Prada. But I was told before that men don't have the ability to love. I was told that uh, there's 41 shades to men. I was told a lot of things about men that I didn't even hear about men. So I'm going to bring my guest on and I want her to fill me in about this love thing regarding men. And I want the, my guest to fill me in about the 41 shades to men. I have a guest. I would like her to please, please, please introduce, introduce yourself, please. Hello. Thanks for having me, Ken. Um, I'm, I go by Princella the Queen Maker. And some people call me Pastor P. I go by however you perceive me. And um, me and Ken, that's my partner. We go way back to 2016 we met doing what we're doing right now right and the whole goal is to empower women because i believe that women are very important for the life and the health of the planet and it's time for women to really know who men are what they are and are not capable of so that women can take their power back because power was divinely meant for women and power is owned by the feminine. So the creator gave me the power to come here and speak and put women back where they belong. One second, P, let me bring you back. Let me put you out and bring you back in. That P sound is coming back up. I'm gonna okay. All right. All right, talk. Is that better? Okay, do what you did before. Drop on the stream and then come right back in. Okay. One shades of men. I'm curious. I'm interested in this. All right, go ahead, P. Is that good? All, 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 all money. All right. <laughs> on the money. So P, P. I, I mean, I just seen you on Fresh and Fit. Mm -hmm. You're making your rounds, right? And mm -hmm. you're making your rounds with a lot of audacity. You, yes. you got, you got a lot of nerve to say the shit that you're saying, right? Yeah. So, so. I want to flush it out of you, all right? I'm sure mm -hmm. you said it a million times, but mm -hmm. I, I want to be real precise and 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 specific, right? Mm -hmm. 
you say that men do not have the ability to love women. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what do you say to the man that says, I went to work for you. Um, I died for my country for you. Mm -hmm. I will stand in front of a bullet for you. What do you say to those men that had that have done it mm -hmm. and willing to do it? What well, do you say to them? Okay. Well, first and foremost, uh, males are resource driven. They are they operate in the the idea of survival of the fittest. They don't live the same life that women live. Okay. So when a male is doing something perceivably quote unquote for a woman, <clears throat> it's mostly based on his own selfish intent. Okay. His own selfish desires. So now we have to think about what is being said. I did this for you. Men don't do things for women. They do them because of women, right? If they weren't driven by sex, resource hoarding, most guys wouldn't even be around women, okay? But they have a biological propensity to women and they do things with the idea or the hopes that they will get a reward in return. It's not, it doesn't have anything to do with her being the best version of herself her living her authentic personality males typically want women to be shaped to be exactly what they want which is opposite of love right because if you really love something you're going to accept it in its authenticity males do not like the authenticity of women they don't like the independence of women why because they lose access to a resource that helps extend their life and make it easier. So if men were doing things for women, then they wouldn't have a problem with women asking them to give them money, pay my house, pay my car, anything, because you go to work for her. So you should do what she, you should give, give her what she wants when she asks. But that's not the case because what we're he hearing, that's simplest behavior. Giving women money is simpish behavior. Giving women attention is simpish behavior. So how are you doing for women? You're not doing anything for women. You're doing it because of women. And going to war, you didn't do that for women. You did that for the 1%, right? You didn't build no bridge for me. As a matter of fact, I didn't ask you to build a bridge. But I could tell you who did ask you to build one. Oh, they didn't ask you. They made you, they rounded you up, enslaved you and put you to work. So you didn't do that for a woman, right? I didn't say men weren't slaves, right? And, 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 and then dying quote unquote for women, males die for sex. Males will put their life on the line for Punani. I mean, they, they're going, they getting passports, flying to Medellin, <laughs> places where they drugging and robbing guys all for the idea of being able to sleep with women. So all of that, what males quote unquote do, that has absolutely nothing to do with women. It has everything to do with them fulfilling their selfish desires. So males aren't capable of love, correct? Correct. Are men capable of love? They are more capable of love, right? Uh, I'll tell you why. Because love is not a concept of the heart. Love is a concept of the mind. And only a elevated male who transitions to highest level of manhood has even got the capability. Well, guess what? That's a very, very, very small percentage of males. Very small, right? Because that requires a lot of self-discipline to even do. When you say elevated, so what are the things that would elevate a man, a male to a man, right? So, mm -hmm. so for, for, for your ladies out there that you chop, that's hearing this, if they was interested in a dude, what would the, be the elevated things that they would on, on site be looking for? That, what, what, what's that look like? Well, it doesn't have a look. Because it's a mind thing. 
right? So you're going to have to actually have a conversation with this guy, right? You're going to have to observe how he behaves. What does his library look like, right? What is his conversation, right? Because the typical elevated man is not going to be having the conversations that you have, you hear them having out there in the um, open world, right? They're not going to be listening. Damn, one sec, P, it, it started popping again. Do the same okay. thing. Okay. okay. All right. Shout out to everybody in the chat. All right, go ahead, love. Right. So this guy is going to operate totally differently, right? So when we talk about self-actualization, right? you you have to do a lot of work to climb that mountain i don't i don't know any mountain that has an elevator on the side of it right i don't know any mountain that has an escalator on the side of it right so you're talking about having to climb and do a lot of personal work the problem is this real recognizes real the woman cannot recognize an elevated man if she herself isn't elevated hmm. because this is a mind thing this is not a physical thing it's a vibrational thing it's a frequency thing so you typically move yourself out of the realms of being visible to people who are not even on that level so if she's gonna quote unquote run into a, a, a elevated man that's there the question is, is where is she? Because nine times out of ten, she not go, she's not going to see him. If you can give the actual age, like for, for, for the few uh, males that transition into men and that's capable of loving a woman, would you, would you put a time on that? Like what would you say would be the default age? Hmm. Well, it would have to be probably over 50. Mm. It, 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 it will probably have to be over 50. Um, and th the reason being for that is that the majority of males could never get there because they are slaves to their sex drive. So in order for them to get there, a lot of times their sex drive would have to decrease quite a bit. But then another problem comes in is that he's on a decline physically a lot of times. So they never get out of needing a woman for something. The male who needs a woman for, for anything can never reach love because you can't love something that you depend on. Because if you're dependent on it and it leaves, you're going to, you're going to be in an energy of loss, anger, resentment, right? And a lot of times when you lose something that you depend on so much, if, especially if you're a male, you can get pretty violent, but you don't want to hurt you. You don't want to hurt what you love, but males tend to hurt what they quote unquote love all the time when it wants to walk away. Right. So we're dealing with a lot of different nuances here, right? Because you have to control your sex drive to even get into the mind field. Right. It doesn't matter what we're talking about, whether it's love, whether it's uh, dominating the financial world, dominating the fitness realm. No matter where we're where we're talking about, you're going to have to overcome the lower nature to get there. The problem with this thing is, is people believe that love is a concept of the heart and that love is a feeling. Love is not a concept of the heart. Love is not a feeling and it is not a action. It is a concept of the mind. So would the male's resources and library have to be aligned or can he be recess strong, library poor, or can he be library strong and resource poor and, and 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 able to transition and get to that elevation to love a woman which which one would you say for the male to really tap into that what which one would have to be strong well they both would have to be strong because he would have to not need but then you have another issue you have another issue even if he had both of these things the other issue is this 
the ideology that women have it so easy that males have programmed themselves creates resentment in males. So when they get quote unquote money and status, instead of them appreciating women, they want to get revenge on women. Right. Yeah. So <laughs> it's not it's not a it's not a financial thing. It's not just a library thing. It's a complete shift in who the male believes he is on planet Earth. Hmm. <laughs> because men resent women. Men are, let me stop saying men. The male by nature resents women because his whole objective is to impregnate women. And guess what? Because the government inflated or inf inflated the world with so many males, they have an enormous amount of competition around. So the male, the average male is competing with so many males that he can't get his sexual needs met. And he sees women can choose and get any sex that they want. He begins to resent her. He's jealous of her and he wants to get revenge on her. He wants to conquer her. He wants to see. Oh, it's coming back. Mm -hmm. Do the same thing. All right, you got it. Yeah, he wants to see her destroyed. So he's happy to see a male that's not him run her into the ground, right? See, there is a complete different psychology in the male that prevents him from ever being able to love a woman. And the reason why some people think that men can love is because people think that love is a feeling. Love is not a feeling. Love is something that requires you to overcome feeling. If love was a feeling, you would now have to ask yourself, how could a person operate in love after a criminal takes the life of their only child? Because when somebody takes the life of your only child, you should be very, very angry. You should be very, very depressed. All of these emotions but people have overcome these emotions so strong to truly operate in the frequency of love. Love is not a feeling. It is a strong amount of self-discipline, control, willpower to overcome the ego, to still be able to seek first understanding, appreciate have compassion for, sacrifice, willingness, I mean, to ensure the survival of and willingness to die for. To do that requires an enormous amount of willpower, control, and discipline, something that the male functionally is incapable of because his primary needs are often unmet, riddling him with a large amount of resentment and jealousy and so even if you wanted to quantify love as an emotion how could love exist in the midst of envy and jealousy hmm. okay i'm gonna throw something at you mm -hmm. and what i'm what i'm gonna throw at you is something that a billion people on the planet believe mm -hmm. right i'm sure some people believe what i'm about to say in the chat all right. So for God so loved the world mm -hmm. that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but will have everlasting life. Right. Mm -hmm. So there's a billion people on the planet that believe that the character Jesus died for them and it was a love thing. Mm -hmm. So for those that are in that belief system, literally, let's just say literal. Mm -hmm. Is he a male or a man? And 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 why? 
it would have to be a man because again, love is the concept of the mind. Okay. And so that, that whole people think, I don't know what verse it is or what scripture is, but when people reference love, right, they always go to another scripture and not that one. They go to the scripture that says love is kind. Love is patient, blah, blah, blah. A description of what they think love feel like. But the true definition of love is actually that verse that you just spit out. For God so loved the world. To love. He's giving you the definition right there. He gave, right? Which was, he sacrificed, right? His mm -hmm. only begotten sons that whosoever believe in him, believeth in him, should not perish but have everlasting life. That's the five components of love right there. To he loved the world so much that he sought understanding, sought first understanding and understood the pain that the world was suffering. So to seek first understanding, to have appreciation so much for humanity that he has compassion, right? That he's willing to sacrifice and give up something worthy to relieve that which he loves or that which he understands and appreciates and has compassion for so much to relieve them of pain because what you love, you don't want to perish and you don't want to hurt. You want it to live on and you want it to live on in its authentic authenticity. That's the, that's what you want. Right. But that requires a lot of ego removal. People are too ego driven, right? The male is led by his ego. He moves throughout the world by his ego. So he doesn't even have the ability to override the components or, or, or the, the lower nature because the male wants power. He's power hungry. He needs validation from the outside world, which would be women, to make him feel like a man. That's all ego. The male does not even want to be seen like a quote unquote simp. That's ego. Hmm. He cannot override his lower nature to get to the higher self because love is not a concept of the heart love is a concept of the mind you got to move to the crown chakra and the male don't have enough discipline and willpower to overcome his lower nature to even reach the concept the male don't even have a concept of love he can't even comprehend it. I I want to cut your wisdom. It for some reason it just it's it starts popping. So do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Every time she's starting to cook, that might get hot. <laughs> that, that might get hot. So if 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 it starts doing it and I just put the finger up, just boom. So mm -hmm. all right, go ahead. You got it. Yeah. So the male is lazy and codependent by nature. The male is deficient. He has so many different impediments in his brain that renders him incapable of doing certain things. The, the, the male's brain is not even wired to the point where he can really control his behavior, where he can't really control his anger. So to ask a male to dig deep to control his sex drive, which takes all the energy in his body to just control his sex drive. You are now asking this guy to control his sex drive, control his anger, and now love you? Mm. That, that's a lot of pressure and that's a lot of responsibility for the male to do in the midst of trying to to live in a patriarchal society that tells him he has to provide, protect, and all that, that inflates his ego. 
makes it very difficult for him to overcome his ego. This is a lot. So Pete, now we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna call you what the world call you over here. We're gonna call you the Queen Maker, right? Mm -hmm. So Queen Maker, when men love each other, what's the difference? Well, here's the thing: the male is not driven to be validated by the male hmm. right so he he's not he's not biologically wired to pass his genes along through the male so there is that requirement sexual requirement does not exist between two males because that sexual requirement that makes males upset and envious because they can't get the sex that they want from the particular woman that they are attracted to. That does not exist with the male. And then by God being painted in the image and likeness of a male, it, it incentivizes him to look up to the male and pour be more show more admiration to what he aspires to be himself so there's a different dynamic between the quote-unquote love for a male and love for a woman that impediment that roadblock sex and validation prevents males from ever being able to love a woman but he can love a man right because of the lack of sexual desire right but sexual desire can brew from this admiration because <laughs> he's looking in the mirror right because the first component of love is to seek first understanding, right? To seek first understanding. Well, the male is looking at himself. He already has a fundamental, basic, biological understanding of himself. So when he looks at another male, he is in sympathy with the male because the male can understand the male the male cannot understand the woman in the male's mind the woman is too complex to comprehend but it's easier to understand a male therefore it's easier for him to be in sympathy with another male this is a totally different dynamic right so, so the bro code is based on what 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 kind of energy is being passed along? Is it is it is it based on some type of respect? Is it ba is it based on something hidden that women can't see? Like what is this bro code? Because it doesn't matter where a guy is from, it seems to be an unwritten energy there. Can mm -hmm. you explain that? Well that 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 thing is power. That thing is power because males cohesively and intuitively know that women hold the power and that males do not have an, a, a winning chance unless they are in solidarity with these concepts to defeat and destroy and control women because males are resource hoarders. They are resource driven. So when they think of another male, they're actually thinking about themselves. So they are always thinking about their own self-interest all the time, which creates the illusion of a bro code. But we all know the bro code. <laughs> <laughs> we, 
Every but time, we every time you pour that grease on, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but ahead. we Go all ahead. know the we all know the bro code ain't totally solid and legit, because the the moment that a dude get an opportunity to fuck his friend wife, he gonna try it. You know that, mm. right? I mean, Sam Cook and uh, oh boy, uh, you know, if you think you're lonely now, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, look, OJ's backstabbers right my friends keep they want to come over when my when i ain't at home because they only there to see my woman but hmm. so they'll backstab each other to get those resources but collectively they understand that they can't ever let women get a rise up because they all need women so they will all be on the same key because when they're looking at women taking power they see themselves losing their own resources mm. right is is this based on class is this based on demographics is this do 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 the uncontacted tribes in in africa in brazil in australia that's away from first world um day-to-day -day issues do, does it count for those males too? Like, is are you when you say males, is it everybody or is are we dealing with specifics? We talk about the majority because the majority have the same base nature. All males have the same base nature, but depending on where they are in the the class hierarchy, they may have a little bit more seasoned psychology. But the reality is, it doesn't matter where you are on the the pyramid. The fact is males need females. They need them. And since males are power driven and they get their power from women, from tapping into the feminine resource, no, none of these males want women to be independently away from them. It doesn't matter because it's women running the corporations. It's women that are, the, that, that, that are behind all of the great things that males accomplish. It's all women behind them. So when when you, because they're power driven, all males, because they, the majority of males operate from the waist down, the overwhelming majority of males operate from the waist down. Is a gay man capable of loving a woman? He is more capable of loving a woman. Right. right? because he's not driven to get his validation from her through sex right a, a legitimately a legitimately raw real homosexual gay male is not driven to get his validation from a woman which makes him more capable of actually loving women because gay males have better understanding of women than a straight male whose objective is to prey on her because hmm. it's gay males it's, it's it's legitimately gay males that have been friends with women who have put women on game about straight men right looking out for her best interest it is the gay male who seeks to understand women to a level that the that the quote unquote straight man ain't even trying to see mm. because the first component of love is to seek understanding right can can the trans man does 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 the trans man love woman i'm a, a, a two-part question well context does the trans man love women and if you see that or the trans women if you see that there is a agenda or not an agenda but if it seems like femininity is being kind of sucked away and used, right? Can the trans woman love women? No. I, okay. Because Why is they're, that? They're, because first of all, those are males. They are male. Okay. And the fact of the matter is, at this point, now they're in competition. <laughs> with with women and a lot of these trans women the reason that they're going is because life is too hard for them 
And so now they think that they can take the place of women and they want to eradicate the use or the, 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 the place for biological females. If you, you don't want to erase and kill what you love, right? You're not in competition with what you love. The trans woman is in competition with the natural woman and is trying to eliminate the natural woman, which is rooted in male nature, because that's the behavior of a male period to conquer territory, to destroy. That's literally the nature of a male. Hmm. And so when you take that, when you take that same mentality and say, I'm a trans woman, and then you infiltrate the spaces of women. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the time. <laughs> Uh, yeah, come back and come in. Uh, yeah, if you lighten that mic up, <laughs> yeah, putting that mm -hmm. hot sauce on there. Go ahead. Yeah. So when then when you infiltrate the spaces of women, the whole thing that drives males to, towards women is to conquer women. That's that's what that's what people don't understand. The nature of a male is always going to be the nature of a male, right? It's testosterone that makes males behave this way. The lower the testosterone, the less likely males are going to act in aggressive ways, in competitive ways, and all of that. Testosterone is the culprit for this, right? It's just the bottom line and it has a major impact on the brain. So you can't just put on a, a, a dress. OK, you can't just put on a dress and then say I'm a woman. Right. And you can't just put on a dress and then say I love women again. Love is a concept of the mind. And I don't care what nobody says. If you can't meet the first component of love. Right. Because I'm not going to tell nobody what love actually is because I do a whole workshop on this. Like I, and it take me six to eight hours to break this whole thing down through visuals, through uh, scientific documents and everything. The fact of the matter is, is that if you can't meet the first component, there is no love. There is a two word definition of love that I'm not going to reveal here, right? But it is made up of five components, right? So functionally or fundamentally, the male is generally incapable. The overwhelming majority are for several different reasons. Number one main reason is because of his sex impediment and his lack of ability to be abundant in that area. Mm. Okay. Straight, heterosexual male, mm -hmm. trans woman, mm -hmm. gay male. Mm -hmm. Which one of them, if all, if everything is the same, mm -hmm. resources for the heterosexual man mm -hmm. and the library, mm -hmm. resources for the heter, uh, for the trans woman, and library, resources for the gay man, and library. Which one of them? purely would love a woman more it would have to be the gay male with all of that here's the reason why first of all the mind is a feminine concept let, let, let's just go ahead and cut to the chase with that the mind abstract thinking are feminine concepts Straight males have an aversion to the feminine. They despise the feminine. They hate the feminine. So a gay male is already predispositioned to be more capable of love because he is more in tune with the feminine. Love is not a concept of the masculine. It is a concept of the feminine. So how could a straight male who despises and hates everything that's representative of femininity <laughs> be capable of love? 
regardless of how much money he got, which is nothing but an artificial, which is artificial in a system of the matrix, right? Right? So if anybody is more in tune or has the capability to love a woman genuinely, it would be a gay male. What could a gay man give that a heterosexual man couldn't give to a woman? Understanding, <laughs> genuine friendship, right? Acceptance of who the woman that is that's in his presence. He can accept her authentically without expecting her to suck and fuck and do all this other stuff, right? But the, the straight male who has an agenda, right, right, to get something out of that woman, males and females can't be friends because males are predators by nature, right? They're predators. So the only way that you could literally get a male to be, to love a woman is you would have to take the predator nature out of him. And how do you take the predator nature out of them? Reducing the effects of testosterone. So a male who is more feminine, right? And you know that males can be more feminine because they put an estrogen in the water. They put an estrogen in all kind of food. So the likelihood that a, a gay male has lowered levels of testosterone and has more estrogen in his system, right? He has more capability of actually doing that. What could, what is something exclusively that a heterosexual man could provide to a woman exclusively? Ain't nothing exclusive that he can provide to her, to be honest. <laughs> nothing with sperm. I mean, if you want to get her pregnant, sperm. I mean, but even the gay male could do that because he got sperm too. But honestly, nothing. It looks like every five minutes, pretty much. Hmm. It looks like every six minutes. I'm not sure why it's doing that. Okay, mm -hmm. hold on, because now we got a can of worms open, right? Mm -hmm. I want to keep. I want to keep it open. Okay. So, the gay man can provide a love to the woman that is exclusive, right? That the straight man can't. Yeah. Right, be right, because you have to get into a different frame of mind, right? Okay. All right. The heterosexual man can provide outside of a child. Mm -hmm. Is it anything positive that the heterosexual man can provide the woman positively? Heterosexual male or man? We are we talking? Mm. So okay. Are we okay. talking about somebody who is okay. elevated to a high level, right? Are we talking about a Marcus Aurelius? Are we talking about a, a Cicero? Who are we talking about? It's, it, it's, you know what? I would love to get to the place where we could talk about a Marcus Aurelius, but that's so uncommon that we have to kind of bring it to, you know what okay, I'm saying? Right, like, because that's the, the, only those right? males at that mental level have the ability to even operate in love. The only only those males. Anything else, we dealing with transaction. We dealing with transaction at this point. Okay, so the, okay, so all right. Emotionally, there's nothing that a straight man can offer a woman that a gay man can't. No. Okay. Right, because he would have to be empathetic, and the average male is not empathetic. And that's what women want. Women want genuine conversations. They want they want interdependent relationships, symbiotic relationships that codependent males who are driven by their ego, they can't give it because it's always something she he wants to reduce her freedom. He wants to own her. So now she can't go. She he don't want her to talk to her friends. She can't wear this. She can't wear that. She got to do this. She got to do that. What can he provide her that she can't provide herself? 
the trans men any positives towards a woman? The trans woman, are there any positives that the trans woman can provide to the woman? No, that, that, that the heterosexual man doesn't provide and a gay man wouldn't provide. Well, again, a lot of these trans, quote unquote, trans women are in competition with women. They in competition with them. So those are males. A lot of those are males who are trying to run away from being males. So I'm going to say no. They ain't even part of this conversation in my mind because they are male. Because hmm. 20 years ago, they asked wasn't able to do this. They just had to be male. Now they got an option to pretend to be women. But they're still male. Hmm. You know? Got you. The Pisces and Aquarius. Mm -hmm. Are there any differences in the male psychology? From the Pisces world and the digital and the Aquarius world or the analog world and the digital world. Is the male psychology the same? Yeah, it is. They're unadaptable. They are linear, two-dimensional thinkers who are actually getting worse. They're actually getting worse because in Pisces, the the system of patriarchy was that it still had it still had ramps, right? It still had more of its structure. In Aquarius, the structure has dis been dismantled some, which has caused males to um, be more unhealthy, have more health problems. They're having they're having less access to sex. They are more addicted to um, external stimuli, games porn because the age of Aquarius has put more at their disposal faster than it was before. So they got more drugs around them than they did before. And so they need women and women are taking off. So the male has gotten worse in the, in the age of Aquarius from Pisces. So has his mentality his psychology changed? Yes, but not for the better. It's gotten worse. So you think modern man is worse? Okay. Is modern so is modern man worse for women than analog man? Yes. Because they are losing their sense of importance. At least analog males still had a feeling of importance that they were actually needed with cars. Listen, with cars becoming more advanced and using computer chips, the old school dude that can used to go and, and work on, you know, an old school car. They can't even do that now without extreme levels of education. You know, then they it's, it's doing it again. Listen, the department complex, you, you it only costs $20 for somebody to come take your trash out, right? Now they got AI, self-drive, women are driving trucks and doing all kind of stuff now. The male has is being slowly replaced, right? Because women are doing jobs that they were doing before and the the jobs that they were other jobs that they were doing before be, have become more complex. OK, and a lot of jobs are phasing out and and then they are overloaded with access to pleasure and they can't control themselves. They didn't have as much access to pleasurable things in analog as they do now. It's like it's it's information overload. Right. It's pleasure overload. It's just sensory overload for a linear thinker who don't have the ability to control his behavior and he has no sense of purpose. So he is more dangerous to a woman because he don't have anything to do. And when he finally gets something right, when you, when, when resources are scarce, you kind of want to hold on to the resources when you get it. So women are finding themselves 
in dangerous situations trying to leave males and they're getting unalived more than ever now, right? Mm -hmm. Than they were in the past. And that has something to do with the manosphere putting that poison in their head at the same time. So with all of these environmental changes, all of this new technology and AI and males not personally developing, they are getting worse and more dangerous because the male doesn't even know how to respond to the changes in the environment. So the only thing that he knows how to do is react physically. Okay, so you, you mentioned the, man, uh, the manosphere. So mm -hmm. I'm going to throw a manosphere talking point back at you and right over the plate. Mm -hmm. So everything you're saying about the male the manosphere talking point would be, but they're being raised by, right? Okay. Women? Mm -hmm. Single women. Okay. To, you say what to that? I say this. That was all by design. That's not the female's fault because this is a patriarchal system. This is white supremacy patriarchy. The white male being at the top of the pyramid. All of the philosophies came out of the mind of the white male. The black woman is on the bottom. So a true, a true matriarchy is egalitarian where women in the community work together because this is a patriarchal system and all of the philosophies of patriarchy is is male centered it's male nature in these philosophies everybody is a male in the mind consumerism is a male is a biological behavioral pattern of males not females, right? Materialism, all of that stuff comes out of the mind of a male. So the women at the bottom, they have men on top of them. A true matriarchy would be women in the front, but males are on top of them, which means women are facilitating males. Here's the problem. It happened before now. When you had redlining, and when women had their rights taken away, the government gave men women. And these dudes kept knocking these women up. Okay? They kept knocking them up. Well, here's the problem. Male sperm swims faster than female sperm. The people, the Y chromosome came from somewhere. The Y chromosome is a genetic <laughs> modification. That's a topic for another discussion. But male sperm swims faster than female sperm. And there are 120 male conceptions to every 100 female conceptions. And then there are 105 male births to 100 female births. So that means a female is more likely to produce a male child because the black woman is on the bottom and black males in this patriarchal society have been given women that they didn't earn. He's knocked her up and left the male who, who has a lot of deficiencies and who needs guardrails and somebody to control them, they have basically used the male to attack women and left these women with all of these boys that they couldn't control. Because guess what? The male, male fetuses leave DNA lodged into women's brains. And then on top of that being the case, patriarchal poison, religiosity, Right. Christianity, Islam, programming women to facilitate male needs. Women couldn't do nothing. They couldn't do nothing. So this is not the fault of women. This is the responsibility of those who created the system of patriarchy. Everybody wants to do finger pointing, but nobody wants to look at the root cause of what's causing all of the problems. And it is the structure and the philosophical programming that has made the world look the way it looks. So it ain't, quote unquote, single mothers. Hmm. Hmm. OK. 
Okay, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Because you, you you mentioned black, so I'm gonna stay there for a second. Mm -hmm. So if the black woman is on the bottom, and there's a male there, now you gave a good um, breakdown of how males can become men. Correct. Mm -hmm. You and I agree to that. Yes. Right? Can the black male become a man? Because I'm sure I know when you're saying this about male to man, I know you have Napoleon Hill in mind. I know you have certain type of literature in mind, but. That's an unfair question. Shoot. Because I'm talking to one. I'm a, I don't, I'm not, I'm a alien. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. No, because no. you, you, you a black male. So when people look at you, they see a black yeah, male sure. so to it can to act as a black man who does the same study that i do to ask that question it's an unfair question because i'm talking to one right so the possibility that that can happen is there the probability though is gone because that takes the type of work that you have to do and self-reflection that you have to do, Ken, these dudes ain't willing to look in the mirror and say, I fucked up. They not willing to look in the mirror and say, I chose this. I did this. They are not willing to do that. I, you, you, right. You know, I, you know, I, I fuck with you with that. I appreciate it. But when I say that, I, I think I got where I'm at from a, like a delusion in my mind. Mm -hmm. I don't see. Like I have a tattoo on my face and I don't know it's there until somebody says something, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So un until someone calls me black, I don't know it. Mm -hmm. So that's me conceptually putting down all the trauma, putting down all the memories, right? So I think of myself as a other and <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I do, no, I do too. So, so I, don't, but... I don't think I don't think that until some I, until I have to identify with the shit. You feel me? Right, I, and I get it because I'm the same way. Because you hear, I've told if you listen to, I told them why y'all want to identify as being black so much. Like right, I, right. I feel like I really feel like I'm from a completely different star system that I'm not even native to this planet, right? But for the sake of the people who perceive us, who we right, talking right, to, right. they see a black man there. So, right. and they see a black woman here. Yeah, so, right. okay. So the fact of the matter is, can a black male transition or transcend to become a black man? Yes, he can, because I'm talking to one. The thing is, again, manhood is a mentality. Right. It is an evolution of the mind. And so is womanhood. It is an evolution of the mind. The prop in order to get here, you got to overcome a lot of the lower natured stuff. It's harder for males to do that than it is for women because males are governed and controlled by the survival of the fittest energy. It is sex power and control and it takes a whole lot of everything for a male to overcome that and not feel slighted by everyday stuff right what's the thing for the female what's the transition so if the let's say the male's thing is is sex eating you know prone to violence these things just in the in the male meat suit what would be the thing in the female meat suit? Let's say, just say the the meat suit vices that every female has to deal with and has to overcome, and uh, the initiation and rites of passage that she has to do with herself. What would be the baked in female vice that every female is born with that she has to overcome to get to the next level? I would say her em her emotional self. And I want it. It's really, it's really not even that because typically, women end up getting into these emotional states after sleeping with males, right? Because you got to go backwards. You got to go backwards because it don't. You start to get programmed before you're even born into the world, right? So we always have to keep in mind that we're not dealing with organic women. 
because girls are born into a world that is heavily patriarchally uh, male dominated. It's heavily masculine. So a lot of these chicks come out worshiping males. And since they're worshiping males, it puts them in a dissonant position that creates illogical and irrational emotions, right? Because they're going against nature out the gate, right? And then once they come in contact with a male, we have to understand what seminal fluid does to the woman's brain, okay? It alters female psychology and physiology. Mm. So in order for women to overcome these effects of this jacked up world, she has to get into philosophy because mm. mind over matter. Right there. Wait, right there. Go ahead. Philosophy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hmm. Shoot. Yeah. So mind over matter, right? You have, if you can operate from the mind, you can control everything else. Because the, the the girl is ignorant and conditioned and indoctrinated to behave a certain way in this male-dominated system, she becomes irrationally emotional. But her, but this is not organic; it's a creation. That's the difference. What we're dealing with with males is more organic because his sexual nature is his biological ruler, right? That's, that's his biological ruler. What makes it harder for the male is his indoctrination to believe that that's masculine and that is superior. That's his conditioning. So he's conditioned to not even try to change his behavior because he believes that men are natural leaders. So he thinks that his deficiencies are traits of manhood. These are the differences that males and females have to overcome, which is not necessarily biological. It is a, it's a, it's a psychological condition and that creates these negative emotional responses and behavioral responses. So Mussolini, Hitler, Pol Pot, mm -hmm. one of your faves, General Patton, mm -hmm. Obama, Napoleon, George Washington, mm -hmm. Genghis Khan, mm -hmm. all male. Mm -hmm. So the modern world believes that the male is the natural leader, right? Mm -hmm. I have mm -hmm. the example, Godfather, Marlon Brando, mm -hmm. I have Michael Jordan, I have mm -hmm. Nipsey Hussle, right? Mm -hmm. What do you think that sounds like to women now that may be first hearing that for the first time, that a male by nature is mm -hmm. not a leader. And and how do you disprove that if Hitler, Genghis Khan, Pol Pot, Mussolini, Napoleon, these are these are men who forge empires, P. Mm -hmm. Like okay. it's how, real simple. What do you say to that? It's real simple. If you go and look into their development, you'll see that everything that led them was the nature of a woman. All of those males have incorporated the things that come from the nature of a woman. And that's the reason why Tupac, because we all heard Tupac, right? Since we all came from a woman, got our game from a woman, our name from a woman and a game from a woman. All of this comes from the nature of a woman. All of these books, it doesn't matter. Napoleon Hill, Think and Go Rich, all of that is coming from, the, because guess what? In order for men to become leaders, they have to go against their biological nature. They're going against nature. And, and going against their nature is going toward the direction of a female's nature. Right? This, it, um, this is my, I gotcha. You ready for it? <laughs> yeah. All right. E ex explain him then. Hmm? How you explain him? Well, that that we all know that he's a he's a doggone alien. But guess what? Here's the thing: okay. he tapped into what 
the reserves, the deep reserves of his mind. The concept of the mind is a feminine concept, right? It's a feminine concept, right? So women have to do a lot of things like that though, right? It might not look like doing 4,000 pull-ups, but women are, they, they go in, they go ham to survive. Look at the things that women have done, raising kids and all of this stuff, overcoming together, defeating what in the, in the March of Versailles and the stuff like that. Those things take a lot of willpower to do, a lot of thinking, a lot of creativity. So it might not look the same. Well, let's put somebody up to who can run, who can run, who can run. The fast it's the same deep reserves that keep a person surviving, which is what women typically do and have done throughout history, right? So again, no matter where you turn, anytime you're entering the mind space, you are entering a feminine space. The mind is a feminine concept. It's not linear. It's circular, right? And that's where all the power is. The power lies within the feminine. So when you look at all of these, and so I'll, I'll, I'll pull it up here. Let's go here. This is what, this is what Napoleon Hill says. Scientific research has disclosed these facts. The men who have accumulated great fortunes and achieved outstanding recognition in literature, art, industry, architecture, and the professions were motivated by the influence of a woman, influenced by the power of a woman. That's a good segue. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you got to come. You got to come out. Go. That was uh, David Goggins I put up on the book cover uh, for anybody that wanted to know. All right. I got something very, very, very interesting in my hand. And before you get into this, P, Queen Maker, can you explain the, the, the psychology um, for people to get things done? Because this is not easy, right, right. Mm -hmm. um, to sit down and to write to start something and finish it rough draft and you know use your own resources to do it right mm -hmm. um, put yourself out there so before we get into the actual the philosophy of the 41 shades of men can you explain the psychology to produce your own things can you explain the psychology of what it looks like day to day you have a child you mm -hmm. have woman shit that you got to deal with how do you how do you how do you do this? Well, it's easy, right? Um, once I'm once I set my mind on doing something, I'm not going to let me down and I'm definitely not going to let other people down, especially when I put it out there that I'm going to do something. So my word is my bond to me and to everybody else. Um, so once once I was on TikTok and I was doing, you know, my 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 workshop, I used to have a a workshop that I've turned into a paid workshop. Now I used to do it at nine o'clock every night on um, TikTok, and that's how I started selling a lot of my five components of love books from my workshop. That proves that men are incapable of love, and they can't do it even if they wanted to. Um, I was on there one night, and I said, "You know what? I'm gonna write this book." called 41 shades of men because there's so many different types of men out there y'all just don't know that they're out there all right and so i put it out into the atmosphere that i was going to do that and people were waiting for it to get done right so i'm not going to present myself to be a liar to myself or nobody else right so that was the contract that i had made with myself I am going to do this within within 72 hours of saying you're going to do something. If you don't start doing it, your brain is going to assume that you're a liar. Right. So I wrote everything down. 
right, on a piece of paper. And then I started writing it. At this point, I was still driving trucks, right? So I would get off work, come home, do everything I got to do with my kid, and I would start writing the book. Then I eventually got uh, laid off from my job. And when I got laid off from my job, I went in hard to finish the book because I also had to have vision to see into the future because I could see that the climate was changing rapidly for female, male and female dynamic relationship dynamics and the power was going back to women. So I, it's always about adding value, right? Because you are the value. What can you bring? And so when it comes to that, it's like go in and give everything that you have and make it quality. I cut out everything. It's not really hard for me because it's just it's just a natural thing for me because I'm actually a natural leader. Right. I do what I say I'm going to do when I say I'm going to do it. And I keep pushing until it's done. And that's how I got that book done. I got my first book done, um, uh, Five Components of Love, when I got pregnant. I got pregnant and I couldn't drive no more because I, I had extreme levels of um, motion sickness. So I couldn't drive trucks no more, so I had to go home. While I was there, pregnant with my daughter is when I wrote The Five Components of Love. Had I had I not written it then, it wouldn't be ready for now because guess what? That, I wrote that in 2018, but I came up with the concept in 2016. So in two years later, I wrote it, and now it's more relevant than ever because that's the direction that the world is going to to figure out what love is, right? That's the conversation that's going on here. All of this. And so now we're at a tipping point for male and female relationships. And I knew that I needed to get it done. So if you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. So if I didn't do it when I said I was going to do it, I would not be ready and in position to offer a product because I'm being lazy, procrastination. I don't have no faith in what I say I'm going to do. I wouldn't be ready to have something to present to the world when I get out here on all these platforms. But it's ready because I could see the future. So, P, I, so I want to get into this, but you, 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 you mentioned a couple things that I want you to get into real quick about just personal development and productivity. If I close my eyes, everything you said the world considers masculine mm -hmm. vision standing on what you say you're going to do. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, being focused, being relentless. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So are you saying that, that would, would, first of all, do you agree that that is that masculine energy? Do you agree? Um, which part of it? Because you, you spoke oh, of damn. masculine Wait, and come, feminine come. energy. Okay, come in, come in, come back in, because I want to I wanna ask what energy is that that you use for, um, what energy is that that is vision, discipline, what is, what is all that? Because okay. I want somebody to walk away t and tap into that mindset in their own life. So what does that look like? Okay, vision is feminine. Having vision, imagination, creativity, that's all feminine. Work ethic, willpower, and determination is masculine energy. So the, the, the phrase, faith without works is dead, is masculine and feminine counterparts. You know, So faith is feminine, works is masculine, because masculine energy is a moving energy. It's, it's, it's a current. It's that current. Right. So a person who operates in the in the way that I do has strong masculine energy because I I work hard. I can work like I, I go in I, I'm, when I do something, I do it to the fullest and I just keep going and going and going and going. I have a lot of masculine energy. I have a lot of willpower. I have a lot of determination, but I also have a lot of creativity. 
a lot of vision, right? One thing, I'm an artist, right? I can draw. I write, I, I, I write poetry. I'm a rapper, right? I'm a thinker. I, I, I'm an abstract thinker. So I have a very good mix of masculine and feminine energy. And it takes the combination, right, of masculine and feminine energy to reach the highest levels of yourself, right? Self-mastery. You have to balance masculine and feminine energy in your mind. It's not an external thing where you can't accomplish unless you have a man. That's dumb, right? That's not how that operates. You balance the masculine and feminine principles within yourself and you come, become a whole version of yourself, right? So I have a lot of masculine energy and I have a lot of feminine energy and I combine those things and that's how I came up with those two books. That's how I came up with my um, workshop that I do because that was all creativity. That was all imagination, how I put that together. Well, Queen Maker, you got some explaining to do. Mm -hmm. You have a book called The 41 Shades of Man. Yeah. <laughs> right. All right. So we need to get into some of this, right? Yeah. Let, let's, let's take it from the top. What's the hobosexual? <laughs> the hobosexual is a guy who needs a place to stay, right? And his whole motivation for dating a woman is to get a place to stay. That's the reason why he's approaching her. So the whole 41 shades of men is this, is that every guy, no man is coming up to you because he wants to love you. First, of, first, first and foremost, they are incapable of love. So if you know that they're incapable of love, that is off the table. So now you can see into him. Why is he in your face? Because he in your face for a reason. Right. How many before we before I answer that further, how many of the people in the audience watch Power Book Two? Does anybody watch Power Book Two? And just one person, I'm just waiting. Somebody got to watch it. I know I ain't the only one. OK. Sheriff Faye, she says she watched Power Book 2. All right. Okay, we got a couple of people that watch Power Book 2. Okay, this last episode, Tariq, Tariq asked Tate. He went up to ask Tate, hey man, this rich billionaire, he he um, you know, he he around. Tate say, well, find out what he want. Oh, what he want? He wants something. He ain't just around you for nothing. Find out what he want, right? Men know each other. They know that the only reason that they in your face is because they want something. Women are too dumb to know what men want because women think that, oh, he just think I'm so fine and so sexy because they are so doped up off of attention seeking and validation seeking that they think a male is approaching her because she the best looking chick in the room right just dumb okay when you get out of that silly mindset and you get into the five components of love and then you realize males truly are incapable of love and can't do it <laughs> even if they life depended on it they couldn't do it um <laughs> Now you ask, why is he in your face? Once you start asking that question, you can start to see the different reasons he could be in your face, which is 41 different reasons. And for this particular guy, 41 shades, the hobosexual is in your face because he's trying to have somewhere to stay because he homeless or he's trying to leave his girl, his mama finna kick him out. He don't got nowhere and you it. Okay, one sec. All right, come back and dive yeah. into this this hobo sexual because I want to I want to know what it looks like. Does does the hobo sexual does he look the same? Is he it, from the south? From the from the from does the New York hobo sexual look the same as the Cali hobo sexual? Is there a specific thing that 
every, everybody could look for it, right? So, Pete, okay. come out and come back in. Okay. We're going we to get into these 41 shades. And what everything I'm going to put on the screen is from her classic works, the 41 Shades of Men. Um, when she's done cooking, I will drop the link in the chat so everybody can get their own copy. Okay. The number one shade, the hobosexual, right? Mm -hmm. Is this a generic thing? Does he look the same, P? Does the hobosexual, is he, if, 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 in his Brad and Chad stage, does he look like Tyrone? There, is there a Mexican version? Like, what, what, break it down for me. The key is to not go off of appearance because looks can be deceiving. We can skip over all of that. Yeah, they could have a stereotypical look, but a lot of times they might not have it. So we don't really want to focus too much on looks. We want to focus on mentality, right? We want to focus on how they behave, right? So um, be very wary of somebody who's trying to jump into a relationship with you real quick, right? Anytime somebody, a male trying to move that fast, it, you already know something behind it. But here's the thing. It's it, people, women could get deceived because a dude, the hobosexual could have a job. This is, this, this was, this is why it's important for women to understand that men are incapable of love because if they understand it, they'll see the game coming before it even gets to their doorstep. A, a hobosexual could have a job. And pretend to be the good guy. But once he got your guard down, he already don't want to work. He waits till he moves in with you and then give up the job and act like he can't find another one. And because he didn't been screwing you and you believe that he's capable of love and you want to hold your man down, you'll fall for the okie doke. And then wonder why, well, he been trying, he been trying for 10 months. No. So a hobosexual could already not have a current job. He could be staying with somebody. You might not even know if he's staying with somebody, right? He could play the game on you, but the key is he'll start talking about moving in or he might come over your house and then don't ever want to leave, right? He could have a job. He could not have a job, right? But you're not going to be able to spot it if you still think in the back of your mind that men can love. You ain't going to, you're not going to spot it and you need to understand this because if you start sleeping with a man, you need to know what his semen can do to you. If you do not have the right mentality after sleeping with him so long, his seminal fluid will begin to manipulate you and bring your defenses down. And if you have this open idea that they can love, you're done. You got to know unequivocally, absolutely, that the male is not capable of love. So that way, when you see the game, that you can cut him off by you believing that he's capable of love. It's going to prevent you from cutting out a problem that's going to eventually weigh on you mentally, emotionally and spiritually. I want everybody to cop this book. But I'm going to give, uh, P, answer this one question. You say in the book, you mm -hmm. ask a question. Is he, talking about the homosexual, is he on dating apps? If mm -hmm. so, how many? How long? A person who is constantly on dating apps and multiple ones are looking for something specific. Yes. What do you mean by that? Okay. If a person is on a date app, right? And they always on there, right? And they ain't they ain't found nobody, right? Or they got somebody, right? But they just constantly on there. They are looking for they are looking for something exact, right? Because 
They are looking for vulnerabilities. They're looking for an open hole. If you don't present it fast enough, they're going to keep going. And it might take them a while to find exactly what they're looking for. They may be on even after you meet them and they suppose they had deleted and y'all think y'all together and they still on there. It's because they're looking for something and they ain't found it yet. Mm. Right. Okay. The hobo sexual, right? That is the first shade of man. The hobo sexual. R.A.P. Mm. Tell me about the lonely man. All right. The lonely man. The lonely man is a guy who don't have no friends, right? He don't have no real associates, right? He don't really have a social life. He kind of isolated. And his whole thing is just to get company, right? He needs company. He's very... Mm. Hmm. What, 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 before you even say it, hop, hop back and hop back in. All right? And we are on the second shade of man, uh, ladies and gentlemen. And I am reading from a masterpiece, 51 Shades of Men. By the Queen Maker. Oh, 40. <laughs> that could be the remix. <laughs> 41. All right. So we on the number two, the lonely man. Go ahead. All right. So this is a guy that you don't, that that doesn't really have a social life, right? And he might he might be socially awkward. He may have um, just gotten out of a relationship that wasn't good. Whatever the case may be, he is lonely he don't have he don't have a relationship with his kids or anything so his whole his whole intent is to get a body in his space it's just to get somebody around and it for a lot of times it almost don't even matter what type of person you are just to have you around right because it says that uh, it's not good for man to be alone right and so you might be a placeholder, right? And there are certain there are certain things that you can discover to find out if he if you are a placeholder, right? The the lonely man is the type of man that's going to rush everything. He going to rush everything. You can tell that he's kind of desperate, right? Because he's going to latch on real soon because it's it's almost like a thirsty person who um who ain't got who hadn't who's been in the desert for quite a while and finally get some water. It's like they're gonna try to suck it dry quick. Now, Queen Maker, you make an interesting observation. You say in your book regarding the lonely man that the lonely man has red pill talking points. Can you go into that for a second? <laughs> yes. Okay. Typically people Typically, people who are opposite of something, they try to convince you that they don't. Th those people try to convince you that their their critical need is not a need. Right. So it's almost it's almost like the weakest one in the room is the one that talked the loudest. Right. You know how these dudes be talking. About, I'll whoop your mother again. Yeah. Come around me. You're going to find out the most dangerous one in the room is the most quiet one. Right. All right. So these the guys who are the loneliest, who are the most bitter, those are the ones that's going to try to convince you that they don't need you. And they sitting in their house or they they little corner room by themselves with nobody around. Nobody likes them at the same time. They're telling you that. Right. So I would be very, very my antennas would go up. Right. My antennas would go up if I'm hearing somebody spit out red pill talking points and mm. they doing it heavily because people who are busy, they don't have time to talk about that because they too busy living a happy, fulfilled life. Mm. Okay. Okay. Huh. The, the, the destitute man, queen maker, the, the destitute man. Yeah. What, what, what is that? Who who is that guy? The destitute guy is the guy that 
has absolutely nothing else going for himself except for the ability to produce kids. That's all he has to his name. He's so spiritually broken, so mentally and emotionally broken that he don't have anything but the ability to knock somebody up and produce kids. And so this, this guy is typically the guy that'll go around knocking up woman after woman. He got 15 kids, 15 baby mamas, uh, 30 kids, right? I got a, I have an episode on my YouTube channel uh, where there are 16 guys and out of this, between the 16 of them, they, they produce 336 kids between the 16 of them, right? And so these guys literally have absolutely nothing going for them except that. Queen Maker, when it comes to the destitute man, you said the man has a poor credit score. Yeah. He it, don't the, got nothing. He don't have anything. A, his credit, a poor his credit, credit score though? Yeah, well, you won't well, what you want to say? Poor zero? Because at least if he had a credit if he had a credit score. You know, he would have something, but a destitute man ain't got nothing. No self-esteem, no no nothing. So his ability to produce kids boosts his ego. It gives him a feeling of being needed because guess what? Them chicks going to probably be trying to chase him for child support, which makes him feel important, which makes him feel seen. Because a lot of guys walking around out here, they feel like they're invisible. So since they feel like they're invisible, they want to do something that makes them seem visible. And a lot of times they'll knock a chick up just so she can chase him, which makes him feel seen. Hmm. Lord have mercy. All right. I don't even know how to, you say this word. The ver, ver, virility? No, virility. Validity. Viril, virility. Thank right. you. Okay. I'm on my pookie spectrum. All right. right. The virility validation man. What, right. what the hell is that? Okay. okay. Come back. Wait. <laughs> Go out and come back in. All right. I mean, damn. The destitute man don't got no credit. I'm. Lord have mercy. I'm. <laughs> Lord have mercy. All right. Oh, no. oh, guess who just hit me up? Who that? Destiny. Blue hair? Yeah. Okay, my dude. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to do it. I'm gonna try to do a live with him. Okay, yeah. Uh okay. Number four, man. Number number four. Okay, the virility validation man, that's the guy who at the male's peak is around 50 years old. This is when men really come into being at their most attractive, right? And virility also has a lot to do with the ability to father children. It has to do with positive masculine traits, right? Including fathering kids. Well, men, they, they, you can't even... You, you can't even donate sperm after 50 years old. So this and, and, and his ability to produce quality sperm drops. So this right, this person right here is right in a real awkward situation where his ability to produce quality sperm, um, quality, quality sperm and have children is in question now. It's in question. So a lot of times this type of guy wants to know if he can still father children. He's kind of like the destitute man in behavior, but not totally. He'll get with a chick for the sole intent just to test to see if his sperm can produce something. Right. And this is dangerous because he will typically go for a younger woman, right? Who's more naive. He may or may not stick around. The whole reason that he dealing with her is just to test the quality of his damn sperm. That's it. it okay. So you said in the book that he is the kind of guy that pushes the narrative that he's ready to settle down. 
Yes, that he want to. That, yeah, that he he's ready to settle down. He'll pull. He'll he'll push that game. But the whole thing is to get a woman or to get the younger girl woman to open up, so that he can see if he he still got it in the the baby making department. Now he won't. He might not go out and create multiple kids like the destitute man, but he will get you pregnant intentionally for that purpose. Queen Maker, goddamn, this next one, man. Come on, you're killing me, man. You're killing me. The tax season, man. <laughs> Everybody know the tax season, man. The tax, well, all right, give it to me. Explain the tax season, man, man. Man, this is just a dude that's really trying to get after you just to get your tax money. Seriously. That's their whole intent, right? And so they come around. They typically go... For chicks with low self-esteem, they'll go for heavier set chicks. And it's good if he look good. If he's skinny, got a little six pack and some nice wood game, it's real easy to, to roach up on a 300 pound chick and, and, and try to pick her up. And then she give her your tax money. I mean, give you her tax money. That, I mean, that's the, that's the game, right? Everybody know that one. <laughs> <laughs> Well, okay, so question: Why would you mention something? Why would he seek out a, a heavy set woman? Because th a lot of times those chicks be having uh, self esteem issues and they be wanting validation. So it's real easy to make her feel like she better than the 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 skinnier girl. She got that Monique complex. You remember when Monique was real heavy set? Mm -hmm. I mean, you little skinny bitches. That's right. His this 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 fine man want me. He don't want you, bitches. He like him some. He like him some Jello, right? It's an ego boost, and based on that ego boost from a, a nice, attractive, skinny, long, long rod having dude, he can really just finesse her out of money. Not the rod. Not the yeah, rod. yeah, the <laughs> rod. Yeah, he can finesse her easy. <laughs> Not the rod. Oh, oh God. Okay. Oh, you, I mean, the high value trick, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the high value trick. All right. Okay. So, what y'all thought was the high value man that that Kevin Samuels was talking about? That wasn't no high value man. That was a high value trick, because a man that's high value has mastered the mind right and he's not just looking for an accessory okay the high value trick is a guy that ain't really get no play in high school college or nothing and then he just happened to come into a, a, a good career or whatever and happens to be able to surround himself with more quality tricks chicks he's willing to pay her okay to be with him right he's willing to use his money to flaunt so he's willing to pay so what women need to understand is the 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 high value trick lady the ch the chick that he's after she ain't really no different than the dang tax season girl she not no different she's just an accessory that's all he got well, a nice see, come come back go out and come back in and yeah. while you're doing that i'm going to uh One sec, P. We left off on the high value trick, but just put a pause in that so mm -hmm. everybody can catch their breath. If you are interested in the 41 Shades of Men right now, you can copy the QR code. There's a direct link. It will take you to the website. Uh, it, that's what we are reading from. This is the Queen Maker's latest masterpiece. The 41 Shades of Men. If you want to learn about the destitute man, if you would like to learn about the high value trick, the lonely man, the tax season man, I have a copy right here myself. This is what we are going over. All you have to do is follow the QR code and it will take you directly, directly to the site. And uh, matter of fact, we got the... We, I don't know if y'all can see that. These joints is autographed. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and uh, press the QR code. I'll bring it back up on the screen after we get through a couple more. Okay, P, you killing me, man. You you killing me. You you killing me. That, the high the high value trick, man. Wait, you say something interesting in the book that mm -hmm. I want to read. 
Go ahead. You say this. A true high value man would be interested in a woman who is on the frequency of adding value to society, the planet, and the world in the same way he is adding value. This is a high caliber mind. Mm, yes. That for a second. Yes. Okay. So a high a high value man has mastered his lower self. He's conquered his lower self. And he understands that his purpose for being on the planet is larger than just having sex, right? Mm -hmm. And just having women. He wants to add value to society. He wants to add value to the planet because that's the reason that humans are here anyway. We were supposed to nurture and sustain life on the planet and bring our gifts and talents to each other to keep that energy flowing, not to suck anything dry, right? Well, when a man transcends into that, he begins to, to think on a higher level and the type of woman that he would want to be around at this point would be something, some a woman that can match his conversation, that could match uh, his duty. That is a person that will be equivalent because for a man, it's lonely at the top. It's real lonely at the top for a man who self-actualizes. And the, the hardest thing for a man is loneliness. Right. So he's not going to just want no anybody around. He's going to want someone who can vibe at that high level. And since women are born already at a place where loneliness is not going to really affect her the way that it affects a male. Um, she's born if she develops into herself at a higher frequency already he's going to want to tap into a woman that can bring that frequency because if he brings somebody that's lower, she can't do nothing but bring him down and he'll still feel lonely if he can't, if she can't match him. So this is high caliber. This is high quality. This is a high value man, right? The high value trick just want an accessory that he willing to pay for. Number seven, the family man. Isn't that a positive B? I knew you was going to say that. A lot of people think that, right? Okay, okay, give it to me. All right. So here's the thing. The family man is a guy that has been conditioned, right, to want to pass his genes along, right? He wants to secure, right, a place that that has multiple benefits to it, right? Even if you look out into the day, there's something going on out there in the, the media right now. My daddy always told me, even when you have a wife and y'all have a kid, she ain't your family. Only your, she ain't your blood. She ain't your family. The kid, your family, right? The whole thing is to mark territory, right? To have something to control, right? And it's all about his legacy. It's all about what he wants to own. Again, men are incapable of love. The whole point of this is, is that every anything that a male is doing is for his own selfish reasons. It ain't got nothing to do with you. So a family man will want to trap a woman typically in his idea of what it means to secure his own legacy or his own his own um something that he owns it's not really about you you're just a part of the whole thing so you have to actually ask yourself is this something you really want to be a part of right because it ain't got nothing to do with you you're just a, you're just a pawn in his ideal mm. Come back and come back in. I need I need to read something because you're killing me now. I come back, come back in. I you killing me. I, Queen Maker, have you wrote the 
48 Laws of Power for Women. Because you say regarding the family man, check his health history. Is it a red flag if he has no rec record of regularly seeing his primary care? Oh, check his health history. Is it a red flag if he has no record of regularly seeing his primary health care physician? This mm -hmm. will leave you to be his primary care provider and waste tons of energy trying to get him to take care of himself. If he won't take care of himself when selfless, selflessness is his nature, oh, mm, if he won't take care of himself when selfishness is his nature, why would he care for you? Exactly, right? Men are selfish by nature. They are selfish by nature. So the first thing they trying to make sure is they got all they needs met. If he is not meeting his own needs for health, then why would he care about you? A part of the reason that he wants a family is as an insurance policy. Is an insurance policy, right? So it ain't got, it's never, it never has anything to do with what's best for you. It's always about what's best for him and what he wants. Pastor P, before I move on, is this the 48 laws of, is this what the 48 laws of power, is this the 48 laws of power for women, Pastor P? Yes, pretty much, yeah. Ouch. Winter's coming, man. You, you make it, winter's coming. <laughs> the emotionally immature man. The emotionally immature man, this guy is like a, he's really a toddler and he's so codependent, right? Emotionally, right? He can't tap into his own emotions because society has made him feel like emotions is something that women do. So he's, this guy has cut off half of himself but he still needs to access this other half. So he will look to the woman to be that other half emotionally. And so he will act in ways to get her to be his emotional outlet. So now she's carrying the job of her own emotions as well as his, right? So he needs her practically to be a emotional punching bag. That's the reason why he wants her. Mm. You say regarding the emotionally insecure man, emotionally immature man, you say, does he try to push you into relationships or learn term commitment once you've done something he perceives as nice and caring? Exactly. Yeah. So um, he's so deficient emotionally because he didn't cut himself off and once he finds the woman that is more in tune with her emotions that will give him a quote-unquote outlet right whether it be happiness anger sadness whatever he wants to express that through her so he will get her once he sees that he can get it from her he'll try to move real quick right to attach himself to her he's like a leech right Mm. Mm -hmm. The sex deprived man. All right. The sex deprived man is a guy who doesn't have access to sex all the time. And he's gone several days, weeks or whatever without it. And he, he, he may have a girlfriend. He may have a wife. But she ain't giving him sex, right? So his whole thing is to go replace her sexually, right? To step out and get his needs met from somebody else. Now, this is some interesting game right here. Mm -hmm. All right. Tell me, tell me about this. You say regarding this male, where does he work? Believe it or not, many males lie about this. 
If a male claims to be highly professional, it is important for you to take note of his ability to spell. Yes. (laughs) No, seriously. (laughs) You have to because here's the thing. They will lie. These motherfuckers will lie about being doctors. They'll lie about being attorneys and everything. You can tell if his ass is lying if he don't know the difference between there and there. I'm telling you, I had a dude try to pretend that he was a doctor and he say he was a baby doctor and he had sent me a picture and some scrubs in the hospital. But when he was sending me text messages, his text messages were highly. Come back, come back. (sighs) The 48 laws of power for women. I'm, I, okay. That's, that's pretty cool. All right, one second. Listen, this dude did. Okay, Pete, go ahead. Yeah, this, this dude didn't even know the correct term for baby doctor. And he, he misspelled so many words. I'm like, ain't no way in hell this nigga went to nobody college. And became nobody doctor, right? But he trying to lie, right? To to up his to up his image, right? So if you stupid as a woman and you just as dumb as him, how you gonna be able to determine if he lying about his education? Cause you retarded too, so you're not even gonna be able to pick it up. So this is why women need to start focusing on their education, focusing on themselves so that you can be able to determine if it's a person lying at the gate. Yo, next one, Pete. Okay, now we're joking, but this is actually a serious one because it, it, it does bring health concerns. How, how real is this? Down low, man. Yeah. Oh, that's real, real. Oh, that's real, real. Okay. And now here's check this out. The down low man has a vested interest in covering his tracks. The down low man will typically go for the baddest chicks. If he can get the baddest chicks, he going to get the baddest chicks. And the reason why, because the baddest chicks, they are the perfect decoys. Because so many dudes want to sleep with that girl that nobody is going to believe that this dude is sleeping with dudes because his girl's so fine. Right? He'll, and if he don't get, um, if he don't get a super bad chick, he'll marry a chick because the marriage has the same effect as a super, super bad woman got because nobody wants to believe that a married man is sleeping with dudes. He got a wife. So can't no way he be. That's just that. Women are decoys for down low dudes. Point blank period. You say something very interesting regarding the down low dude. He is heavily misogynistic. This should raise your attendance because males bash women because they believe it makes them appear more straight. This has been said by gay males and straight males. Straight males believe only gay males and simps support women and side with women. Mm -hmm. Straight males do neither, according to them. Because of this, you should really pay close attention to hyper anti-woman talk. Yep. Absolutely. Spot on, right? Because the only way that you could appear straight, right, is having a grievance with a woman. Why? Because males are frustrated with the power that women have by nature. So if you are straight, you would naturally, based on that male, have a grievance with women, right? So those guys should be spitting red pill manosphere stuff. That 
plays as a decoy. No, nah, cause ain't no straight male talking about women negatively. How many times have you been called a simp just by speaking the way you speak, Ken? Every day. Every day. <laughs> but you straight though, right? Yeah, the, if you oh, was yeah. if you was bashing women, they would think you was the man, right? Right. So a gay male who really likes sleeping with dudes, they be they will bash women because it gives off the appearance that he's straight and ain't nobody going to question it. Hmm. Queen maker that I have, I have all 41 queued up and it's, it's, it's up to you. I wanted to give the audience a piece of the 41 yeah. shades of men. Um, it, it's up to you if you want to no, keep going. No, let, let keep them buy it. So I want to put the the link back up here for the book and why people are, you know, going ahead with that call to action. Can you just, can you leave us with the, the why? Why, first of all, why should women get this? We, we're calling this the 48 Laws of Power for Women right mm -hmm. why um and how do you make a queen okay well let's answer the first question because women have been been getting drugged and drugged through the mud they've been abused they have given up their daughters for men they're trying to get something out of men that men are not capable of giving them and they need okay this this will be the last time so go okay. ahead that is the link to the 40 41 shades of men and we went through the first 10 it is 31 more you definitely want to check that out go ahead p finish up yeah they need they need real eyes to realize real lies that's what they need and if they truly want to, if they truly want happiness and they truly want their lives to change, right, then they'll get the book, right? And how do you make a queen? It's real simple. The queen is the most powerful piece on the chessboard. This life is a game. The problem is, is women ain't figured out it's a game to be played yet. And she not playing back. But when she does play back, the queen is the most powerful piece on the chessboard because it has the ability to move any direction uninhibited. Right. And so that means women have to be free. Me teaching women that men are incapable of love and women seeing that it frees up her mind. It frees her up and releases her from guilt so that she can be free to live out her true authentic self without having to compromise herself to supply the needs of a male. When she becomes free there, she becomes free in six total areas, then she becomes a queen. But how do you become one? The queen bee and the queen ant, they are not queens by genetics. They are queens by nutrition. And the nutrition that you feed the queen ant and the queen bee is what makes them a queen. So the nutrition that you need to feed yourself is the nutrition of the mind. It is the power dynamics. It's the power plays that you need to, to feed yourself. But you can't be in power if you still believe in delusional bullshit that men are capable of love and you want some fairy tale thing that men ain't capable of giving you. So if you want to have power, you will get the books. If you want to be weak and continue to deal with the, 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 the trauma, then don't get the book. Stay a slave because it's only three people. You either going to be a queen, a concubine or a slave. You either going to be a pimp, a hoe or a trick. Pick your poison. I'd rather be a pimp. I'd rather be a queen. Queen maker, I'm gonna throw a few where I'm gonna play a game with you. I'm gonna throw a few words at you, and what you tell me the first thing that comes to mind. You ready? 
Yeah. Patriarchy. Matrix. De decentering men. Freedom. Woman. God. Love. Freedom. Queen maker. Power. I appreciate you letting me talk about your new works. Uh, I'm super excited for all the things that you have coming up. Um, I hope you continue to grow. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm super proud of you for this because I understand how hard it is to put your mind to something and complete it. It's a lot of content creators, but not everybody has product. Mm -hmm. Right. So people just talking, but you are coming to the table with your own philosophy. Right. Yes. And mm -hmm. P, I just want to let you know when we're long gone, the mm -hmm. ideals live forever. Yeah. Right. So mm -hmm. I appreciate you. Uh, I love the work. And that is the QR code right there for everybody that's interested in getting this timeless masterpiece. Oh, you also have your. Uh, workshops coming up yes yes my workshop is tomorrow and it's still still open if you if anybody wants to uh register it's called love men and manipulation decoded and in this workshop i prove beyond the shadow of a doubt that men are not capable of love and i prove what love is and how it works how the frequency is constructed i give you the total science of love human behavior and manipulation all in one so where you never get played again and you can see what love is absolutely and you can become love because love is the highest frequency in the universe and when you only women have the ability to become love women ain't supposed to be looking for love you supposed to be love but you can't be love if you don't know what love is and how it works and how it's constructed so you can pop up over there and come and see me tomorrow where can people uh check check the link out for those that don't know uh it's in this uh nelly just put it in the uh the uh comment section it's uh princella the queen maker.com okay awesome this is the 40 41 shades of men and i and i want to hold this up for the dudes that are watching for the cloud, from the cloud, you can say whatever you want. You could talk, you could call this woman a feminist. You could talk about her looks. You could come at her, but you have to first have a product first, right? Because mm -hmm. if you just run in your fat mouth, that's your opinions and shit. This is her book. This is a product. Mm -hmm. You feel me? This is on the market. This is what she's standing on, right? So after you finish fat mouthing and after you finish clipping her up and and trying to poke holes in her argument, understand your words don't matter because she has a product, right? This is America, mm -hmm. right? So you really look bad as a man talking to a woman about anything and you don't got a product, mm -hmm. right? This is her product, 41 Shades of Men. I stand on it. Yo, P, I appreciate you. I got one more thing to say, Ken. For everybody who just purchased the book, we the shipment is coming from the manufacturer. So it's going to be yeah, a couple you, days for the you, 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 you popping. I want, I want them to hear that. Come right back in. This will be the last time. All right. All right. You got to go out. Okay, there you go. All right. All right. So everybody that just purchased the book, the shipment is coming from the manufacturer. So give I'll ship them out in about a week. They should be here in a couple of days. But I just want to let y'all know. So y'all don't be like, oh, where's the book? It's coming. I just got to get them from the manufacturer because they binding them now as we speak. But do you have a digital version on your oh, on your website? Yeah. Mm -hmm, you do? Yes. Okay. Yes. You have a digital mm -hmm. version. OK. And can we expect the audio version? Yes, I'm um I'm halfway through recording it. All right. All right. So for those that want to hop check out the workshop, it's on your 
website? Yes. Yeah. And I be oh. doing and I do I do that workshop um twice a quarter and as as you know as time starts to speed up and more and more people I can start doing them more frequently but as of right now I do them uh twice a quarter. So if you miss this one, I'll have another one that I'm doing in June. Uh P correct uh correct me if I'm wrong, but then um then Kevin Samuels, then he tell them to show their work. Yep, he did. He, show your work? he did. Show your work. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Hey, P, I appreciate you. Thank you All so right. much. I appreciate you. you. All right. All right. Bye. I done made money, lost it, and made it back again. I done took major losses in the game. You get the benefit from my losses. I sat with some of the realest people that ever walked this planet. You get the benefit from that. See, when I'm talking, man, I'm not one of these niggas, man, that didn't get it out the mud. I'm not freestyling. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not speculating. This is raw and authentic. This is, the, this is the game that you apply ASAP and it change your life and people see a difference in you. People say, wow, look at her, wow, look at him. Man, whatever they doing, man, it must be working cause damn they look better, damn they sound better, they moving better. Well, that ain't free. You gotta pay for it just like I had to pay for it. Put the money on the wood. Respect 